I have a new keyboard. It does appear to be a little bigger than I was expecting. This is a IBM 6747 electronic typewriter which dates, as far as I can tell, from about 1986. It appears to be the internationalized version of the venerable Wheelwriter 6. I picked it up in a Zurich junk shop for 5 francs, which means I paid about 38 cents a kilo. Being a 1980s IBM machine, it's very, very serious. It's seriously big. It is seriously heavy. It has a very serious power switch. And when you turn it on, it makes serious noises. So technically, this is an electronic typewriter rather than a mechanical one. Inside, it's really just a IBM Model M keyboard connected to a small computer, which then prints what you give it via a daisy wheel printer. For those of you who don't know, daisy wheel printers work by using a solenoid to mash a shaped print head against the paper via an inked ribbon. Each letter has its own head, individually sculpted, and they come in sets on these replaceable print wheels. I have two, Courier 10 pitch and Courier 12 pitch. The technology is simple, effective, but very, very loud. Originally, it was the keyboard which caught my eye. It's a classic IBM Model M buckling spring keyboard, and I've been looking for one for a while. So I originally was intending to just rip the keyboard off and use it myself, because apart from being a gorgeous thing to type on, these typewriter keycaps with the strange symbols are absolutely awesome. Sadly, the typewriter turns out to be in complete working order, and I really don't think I can live with myself if I broke it down for parts. So, what can I do with this? Well, despite being computerized, it still thinks it's a typewriter. Press key, receive letter. So, let's try writing a letter. It's got automatic paper loading, which is great. but I do have to set the margins manually, which is less great. Lining the address up is easy, given that it's got automatic tab stops. It has no italics, of course, but it does do underlining.
and automatic word wrap. And we're done. The print quality is superb. I have a plastic ribbon in this one, which means that there's a perfect ink transfer onto the paper. And off the ribbon, this does come with an automatic audit log. On the paper, the letters are precisely lined up. This underline was made by printing repeated underscore characters in a row. You can't tell. It's easily as good as the laser printer. But of course, printers can make copies very easily, which typewriters normally can't. Except this one has a trick up its sleeve. Let's take the lid off. This is a 1980s IBM machine, which means it's seriously maintainable. The serious lid just unclips and lifts off, revealing the works. In the back is the printer control board, which manages the actual hardware, and the power supply, an old-fashioned linear transformer. These are connected via a well-labeled ribbon cable to this computer in the front. Taking the lid off that, reveals a microcontroller and 32 kilobytes of battery-backed RAM. This is intended for storing text. So, I load some more paper. Tell it to remember what I'm typing. And retype my letter. Instead of certain key phrases, I enter what's called a stop code. So now I have a skeleton letter. It's no use as it stands, but now the right key sequence and the typewriter reprints it automatically. When it reaches the stop code, it pauses for me to type stuff in manually. Then it continues. Because there's automatic word wrapping, I can enter as much text as I like and everything still works fine. So, with a minimum of effort, I now have a professional looking copy of the letter ready to send. I can complain about anything if I wanted to. So what would you use a typewriter like this for today? Not a lot, to be honest, but there are still some things they're great for, mostly forms and envelopes. Putting an address on an envelope is so much easier with one of these than fiddling about with page layouts on a printer. Any office that handles a lot of correspondence will probably still have an electronic typewriter sitting away in a corner. Plus, typewriters are so satisfying to use.
They're so intoxicatingly violent. My words are literally shaking the world. Or at least the camera. You can tell that whatever it is I'm writing, it must be very, very serious.